Hey, what's up everybody? It's Martin Miller here and today I'm really proud to present to you an exclusive guitar lesson given to you and to myself by one of the greatest blues players alive, Mr. Josh Smith. Josh, how are you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. I was just hitting record on my thing. Thanks for, uh, <laughs> for having me. Um, yeah, man. Let's, uh, let's talk about the blues. It's my favorite subject. <laughs> yeah. So the thing, what I want to do here really is I want to establish this as kind of a series where I take guitar lessons from absolute experts in their field. So in case of Josh, um, you cannot find anybody who's more knowledgeable about, about the blues out there. So Josh, for myself, I find it very hard to produce authentic results when I play the blues. I, I know the theory behind it. I do have the technique to play it. Why does somebody who, who knows how to play still not make the blues sound right? What, 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 is, what is missing? What is the key ingredient? Ooh. Um... Well, the key ingredient is, is, you know, an intangible thing that can't, it's hard to be taught. You know, it's a mm -hmm. lot of this, you know, but one of the most important factors in playing blues, you know, sufficiently is it, treating it with the proper amount of respect. Mm -hmm. You know, we all know musicians, very schooled musicians who look down at the blues, you know, and thumb their nose up at it and say, oh, that's simple music. Anybody can play the blues. It's boring. I don't want to play the blues. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, and and I think if you don't treat the blues with the proper respect that it requires and listen to some of the masters, you're never going to be successful in playing the blues properly and imparting the right amount of emotion and feel into the playing. And it's something I can never understand because the, this music is the foundation of everything we do, you know, in jazz and rock and roll and soul and R&B and country. I mean, the blues is the roots, you know, it's yeah. the foundation of the yeah. building. So I think arrogant, arrogant call it music college me would have the stands. Well, I can play the pentatonic and I can do bends. So I got this one covered. Um, yeah. Until you until you grow up and you realize there's so much more to this. And I mean, from my perspective, playing with guys like you or like Kirk Fletcher, um, I've learned to really appreciate what the blues brings to music. And that's why I like to, to surround myself with people like you, because I, I can really, I, I think I can learn a ton and absorb uh, a lot of these things into my music. Thanks, man. Yeah, you know, the blues is, it's a, it's about telling your story in the most honest and direct way you possibly can. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I start an improvisation, I'm trying to accurately convey to the audience how I'm feeling in that exact moment, mm -hmm. you know, with, with this, with this thing that this is my tool. So I'm trying to convey my emotion, my feeling, um, I'm trying to obviously serve the song, the groove, the structure, the chord changes, all those things, but mostly tell a story and convey my feelings. So, I mean, that's, it's a hard thing to do. It's a hard thing to teach, but it's the goal, you know, yeah. and, and we all have been in these places in these situations where we've heard guys who are technically good guitar players play a blues solo that says absolutely nothing. That means absolutely nothing, and you, you know, and, and it just sounds like a bunch of run on sentences, you know, where, where a guy will come in and here comes the turn around. It's about to be your turn. You know, and and it's like. Nothing wrong there. No, no bad notes. No yeah. mistakes. No, no, you know, none of that. But said nothing. Just sounded like a bunch of verbal garbage. It's, you it's know? rambling, and right? It's it's rambling. It's run on sentences. It's there's a big difference between that and you know. That's 
a complete thought. It's a story that moves through the changes. And yes, I'm highlighting changes as they go by. I'm, I'm you know, slurring and playing interesting guitar-y things. But more importantly, I'm telling a story. And, I'm making and I, a statement. I'm answering it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I want to point something out that if you're not aware of it, you may miss that is actually more difficult than it sounds. But when you play these unaccompanied solos, you're not just playing the right notes, but you're also all by yourself carrying the beat and the form of the music, the 12 bar form. So this, this ongoing steady pulse is carried by nobody but yourself. So how do you, how do you develop that? How do you not trip over yourself? I find myself like, I can start this out. A matter of time until I until I trip over myself. How do you combat hmm. that? Well, I mean, a lot of that is is obviously I've ingrained those twelve bars so deep into my system. I feel like sometimes I can play a note and and let four bars go by, and just naturally I'm going to know what's next. And that that comes from playing a lot of blues. You know what's funny is a lot of times when you play with jazz musicians, which I do plenty. Um, I'll call a slow blues and a slow blues is a really, really tough test mm -hmm. for people who never play the blues because it moves slowly. And then those changes go by. It's easy to lose the form if you're not paying attention and, and not feeling it. So I'll play with bass players who can blow over giant steps eight times over and play through any change and do all this stuff. And then, yeah, they'll lose the form on a slow blues and I'll be soloing and it's like, well, fuck, if a bass player loses the form and drops the wrong root note, everybody knows, you know what I mean? And, and the slow blues is kind of an example where, where you, I would assume you play the, high, the, the, the smallest subdivisions. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So it's a, it's a yep. slow pulse, very narrowly subdivided. And then that's probably very, or like you do the SRV thing, you just, you just, you just float over it. Well, yeah, I mean, but I, I'm trying to be in this, I'm in a place where if I play, like, let's say I count a slow blues, mm -hmm. I can take 12 bars super slow and be totally comfortable unaccompanied. One, two, three. That's really hard for people who, who aren't comfortable in this environment to do. It's really hard for them even to do with the band sometimes it, and not get lost. I'm just thinking how would somebody watching this video understand this if they've never done such thing? Because a lot of people when they, when they play the blues unaccompanied by themselves, they play blues vocabulary but they don't play over a form and they don't keep time. So what I would actually, for me as a, as a teacher, and also as a learner, as somebody who's trying to get good at this, would be, I would probably scroll back, uh, rewind the recording and try to accompany Josh as you play this. So you understand how what he plays relates harmonically, but also rhythmically, right? So, so I think, I yeah, think getting, getting quite a bit, of, a bit of, of practice time on the rhythm side of things would be highly important, right? Well, I mean, the amount of time I've spent practicing rhythm guitar is directly attributable 
to the amount of vocabulary rhythmic wise that I have as a soloist. I mean, when I'm practicing soloing, when I'm playing unaccompanied here at the studio or wherever, which is, uh, you know, at some point every day, I mean, that's what we do. I'm sitting around playing guitar, practicing. I'm never just going, you know, like, no, it's always, you know, to some, It's always changes. It's always a groove. It's always time. It may not always be a blues. It may just be a vamp. But I'm always playing to something inside. And that's strengthening the bond between the internal clock I have, my hands, my phrasing, my brain, mm -hmm. all of that. I, I, I keep saying that to my students when I, when, I, when I solo over something. I try to... Most people try to represent at least the key that they're in, right? And in the same way, I try to represent the rhythm that is going underneath. So if, even if I'm playing, if, if you were to remove the rhythm section from, from, from my solo, you would still hear where one is, where the pulse is. But on a more advanced level, you also try to, to, to represent each individual chord that is going by, I assume. Of course. But equally as important to the chords is, is like you said, the rhythmic feel mm -hmm. of the song, you know. So, so let's say let's take a let's take a simple shuffle. Can you can you play like the 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 simplest version possible, simple phrases, and throw these rhythm these these kind of rhythmic answers, rhythm guitar answers in? So, so somebody who has not tuned their ear to to the blues form can follow along and maybe transcribe this. I'd play something. So I'd, I'd normally start by playing just rhythm like this. Uh, sorry. Here we go. Right? So I started to embellish a little bit, then I'd go further. I'd start to fill in gaps. do it just soloing. You know, until it's 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 all interchangeable the rhythm the licks the feel nothing ever wavers you know the time but i mean i that's you know you're talking about years of sitting on the foot of my bed doing that exactly that thing i just did can you just teach me four bars of that and i, and I want to try to really absorb what is going on there yeah so a good mm. a good like a good way is to come up with like one little hook yeah. that's in between the chords so something like like a all right all right there's a lot to unpack there <laughs> yeah. it sounds simple at first so so that, those are the notes but that's not exactly what you're doing there's 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 more to this yeah so i'm so and then sliding back down to here all right to yeah that. to oh, the sure. so you play sorry i gotta and then, so I play the seventh verse. And then I play 
sixth chord after that. It's the, the seventh, third, thirteenth chord. Is that the yeah. chord? Yeah. Yep. So the first thing I play is just that double stop of the dominant seven, and then I go to six, the sixth chord. Let me try. Is that it? Yeah. But there's there's one more thing. There's one more thing in there. Do that again. Yeah, there's this this little percussive. Yeah. What is that? So Yeah. Almost, yeah. I, I still don't have the motion down completely. Right. And it's just so much fun to just to just be able to maintain the groove all with yourself. Well, so that's, I mean, that's, so that's the, yeah, I used to sit around and see how much I could, like... one I got from Robin right there he would play yeah is that oh so it's it's I'm really skipping a string on the uh. Yeah, but it comes out like this. Yeah. But I would never play it back to back. I'd I'd double up so I'd go like But I mean, all of that, all of that rhythm guitar playing is 100% within my soloing. All that timing, the way that I work my way in and out between every chord and fill those little gaps, that's the way that I solo. That's the phrasing that I hear, you know. Whatever. And this this was about as bluesy as it gets, and there wasn't a single bend in it. So for those yeah. who think yeah. blues is just pentatonic and bends, there was no pentatonic, there was no bends. No, no, it's not. I mean, bends bends are like anything else. They're a tool for expressing the way that you feel and the inflection you're trying to get. So of course I bend a lot. I you know because but it it, it just depends on what I'm trying to do in that moment and and so the way I'm trying to maintaining yeah. that groove. What is it? What is a bending thing that you might do? Um, well, I mean, I'd take the same phrase. It's not the same phrase, but the same kind of groove, and I would you know play a solo, a much more limited solo, like... Something like that, yeah. you know, where... I'm alternating the feel of the notes a lot to create right. more more tension and dynamics within the solo. Mostly to make it sound more vocal. And so in that op that opening phrase, do you remember what you played? There was this this bend on the high E string that you followed up with a slide. Yeah. Okay, so I, I want to get that 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 to me is the sound of blues, and I want to try to get that. 
So that's, you know, to me, a lot of blues is, is following up a note with the same note done a different way. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You know, it, because there's a lot of that. Like, so I'm bending up and then following behind it with a slide. So the whole phrase goes? Yeah, and some, then I'd maybe slur even after that. Something like that, you know? Yeah, to teach, yeah. Settle, settle for one phrase and, and, and I'll try to copy that. Yeah, right. So, yeah, so. Almost. Yeah, there's a lot of nuance in there. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of nuance available. Yeah. yeah. And then you did a thing where you... Uh, that is on the same string. And you, you overbend yeah. it a little bit. Yeah. Because Yeah, cuz I'd know I'd follow that up with something. All right. The, the, the David Gilmore. Yeah. So that is, you start on the, on the root, then you go to the minor third. And let's not yep. forget, you're doing that in 13s. Yeah. This is just interesting for those who think you cannot bend on an Evertune bridge. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's funny yeah. because I, th I feel like I got a better grasp on the blues just sitting down with you for an hour. And Man, so so much of it is the little things, the the inflections, mm -hmm. the intent behind the note. Uh, you know, one thing that's obvious when you listen to Albert King, Albert King, when when you know when he's playing guitar, or BB King, or Magic Sam, or Otis Rush, any of these guys, they meant every fucking note they played, every note, they meant that, and that's been the biggest driving force. And the way that I want to play guitar my whole life was not to throw anything away. I wanted everything I played to have a meaning. Even if it's just to me, I wanted to believe it. I wanted to mean it. I don't just play to play. I don't just play to impress guitar players. I don't just play to impress myself. I play because I feel it. And it's got, I got to get it out and play it. And that's I want to hear it. You know. And yeah. It's not always 100% successful, but that's the goal. And it's very important to, to, to understand that, I think I've said this before, but you're very deliberate with what you do. The idea you put out on the guitar exists in your mind first. You have a very clear conception of how it's going to sound and how it lays out on the guitar. Before we move on, I just want to take a brief moment to talk about the sponsor of this video. And the sponsor of this video is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community platform where basically millions of creatives get together and exchange knowledge and creativity with each other. One of the coolest things about Skillshare is that it offers thousands upon thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. And the topics include illustration, design, photography, videography, freelancing, marketing, and so much more. I want to just really briefly tell you how I've been using their platform as of late. So as you can see, there's a piano behind me. And the reason is that I really want to be using the piano as a tool for composition. And Skillshare actually offered the perfect course for me that accomplishes just that. It's called Music Composition with Piano and it's by this fellow named Jack Vaughn. The course is very profound. It's logically structured and beautifully presented. So Music Composition for Piano is definitely something I recommend. Skillshare is completely ad free. They keep adding premium courses on a regular basis. Basis, and you can get a monthly subscription for as little as 10 US dollars. The first thousand people who click the link in the video description and go to Skillshare will get a free trial premium membership. So check it out guys, Skillshare. Taking it somewhere completely else, um, let's take a completely different groove. Like a 
the thrill is gone type thing. A straight straight ahead blues. Um, how would you approach soloing over that? Yeah, so obviously my feel is going to change on something that's straight quarter note, eighth note, not swung. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, thrill is gone. You know, I'm thinking two things. Obviously, I'm thinking minor because it's a minor song. And it's minor. Mostly, yes. I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking about BB King. You know, that's my first thought. So he, he's gonna. You know, and that's a simple <laughs> little lick. Yeah, but then why do so many guitar players sound bad playing that lick? Because there's so much nuance to it. Like the, the thing I noticed first is you have this, the same thing we just talked about. The same note on two strings. The B string gives you a different type of vibrato. If I bent it or stayed, it wouldn't be the same. Or if I went... It's not the same as... It's much more gentle you know? this way. Yeah, and, and it's obviously what he was feeling. And, you know, it's... Uh, you can make a whole solo on a song like that without ever leaving, like, this box. how you played the five chord there. I think that that sprung out to me really. You could really tell, oh, this is the five chord. Now, if I were to walk in and I didn't hear where you started, I would still be exactly to tell when you hit the five chord. How did, how did you manage Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, plus Thrill is gone, so I'm thinking. You know, so I'm hearing that as it goes by, but without telegraphing it 100%. It's one note, you know? It's like I'm just making sure I make the change, but still sound like a blues man, you know? And that that's the way I think about it. We've talked about this too, the way I think about any of the other harmony that I might play. Be it just simply arpeggiating chords and highlighting changes as they go by, or be it, you know, substituting different scales for chords or playing two, five, one turnarounds or diminished things or whatever idea I may play that's outside of the pentatonic scale. I think of those things as like, special moments that need to be meant as much as the the blues stuff so the same way that i believe in this phrase i want to believe in you know if i run some sort of melodic minor lick like that i want to believe it i want to hear it in my head so much that it's the only thing to play in that moment yeah like yeah. I, my instinct for the five chord would be of course yeah because that's where i come from um yeah but yeah. but i think the danger for for guys like me is is they think they don't sound good playing the blues because they they don't throw at too much at, at enough stuff at it and you always hear people say, <laughs> how can I get outside the blues box when most people have never gotten even inside the blues box? Yeah. Hey, Josh, how can I get out of the blues <laughs> box? I hear you play all this stuff uh, outside the box. I just want to break out of the box, man. And then I listen to them play the blues and they can't play the blues. And it's like, man, I don't want to hear you play other stuff if you can't just do this stuff right. You know what I mean? Especially not in that context. Because it takes a special player in a traditional blues context to play jazzy things or arpeggios and make it still sound like the blues. Otherwise, it sounds like a workshop. You know what I mean? It sounds like somebody showing off or somebody who's practicing on stage. And that's the, the literally the polar opposite of what the blues should sound like. The blues should sound like this person is lost in the moment and he's not thinking at all you know what i mean he's just playing from here and it's hard to do that and play more sophisticated things and make them feel that way right. so i'm always trying to hold those things back like i said until i really feel them and hear them and then that's when they come out it's the icing on the cake but you got to work on the cake first 
It's it's the icing on the cake. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and I I struggled for a long time when I was younger with even allowing myself to play these things I was hearing. You know, as I was learning new things and listening to Charlie Parker and learning how to play a 251 or whatever, uh, struggling with being okay with putting that in in a straight muddy water style blues because no one else does it, you know? And then I heard guys like Robin Ford and other guys and realized it was okay to do this. And it, it doesn't mean, like I've said before, like you're cheating on the blues. You can still love and respect the blues and be playing it the right way and play this other stuff. I think you get away with it as long as you have the, the fundamentals down. Um, so one last thing I've noticed that seems to be like an absolute essential blues cliche is a lot of your lines will end on this little slur, this little downward slur. And I've never, I've never gotten that sound. And how do I do this? <laughs> well, that stems from wanting to have little punctuations on mm -hmm. licks, phrase enders, if you will, you know, and that comes from listening to Albert King would end so many licks on the five. So he'd play and end a phrase on the fifth, you know, or Albert Combs would end a phrase on the fifth like that, you know, or uh, all these little things or with a pull off, you know, oh or my God, that's so cool. You know, all these types of Can, things. Teach me those last they, two. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Albert so Collins cool. one. Well, well, let's move to A. All right. But Albert Collins would play, like, all this. Yeah, I, I need to be able to. I need, need this in my life. What is this? What is it? On, on the G? How do I yeah, get Yeah, but that? don't linger on it. Yeah. It's 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 just it's it's funny because this is technically quite difficult. It's not it's not like shred guitar, but it's such a quick refined move. Well, Albert played this it, very very percussive. So So how do you get how do you get that snappiness into the, into it? Yeah. How do you get that? Yeah. I'm using my fingers now. I mean the pull-off motion. Yeah. So is it? Do we pick that the lowest note? I'm 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 pulling off. So Albert would play a whole solo like that shuffle in A. One, two, three, four. And what was the other one that you played? There was a rake, rake going on. Oh well, that's one I play a lot. Like like um. um. Okay, that, yeah, that last one. Show me that. Stuff like that. Okay. It's a. So that's that's mine. That's one of my phrase enders. W so I you'll hear me music. a lot of times. I think I got it. You see this stuff? Nobody would think of, of this as this is something. Nobody would compare that to Ingve, but to me, honestly, this is harder than an Ingve lick. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just. It's a, yeah, it's it's a it's a nuance, you know. Yeah. So for me, I'm gonna. It won't always be exactly the same, but that's like one of the ways that I'll end phrases. So like like one, two, three. You know. So you, now you did. Yeah. 
guys did it differently that time. Yeah. So, I, I, yeah, I, I might have to steal that. <laughs> I play that one a lot. It's awesome. So, yeah. so for anybody trying this, what, what really what really grounds the lick for me, makes it possible, is is to is to think of this note as the downbeat. To kind of kind of because you know there's an in like I have kind of an undefined amount of notes in between that with the rake. Yes. Right. Yeah. So you really yeah. need to to think of this as the landing point. Yeah, and that's that comes directly from me marrying the Albert King and Albert Collins thing with a little bit of the way Stevie would rake. So he'd play these licks like. Oh. Right. Yeah. There's sometimes you do this thing. This last thing I'm going to ask you. This type of thing where you slide up to note. It sounds almost like you're bending, but you're not. Yeah, like a, I slide up a minor third. What is that? Yeah, I need I need to I need to to know what that is. <laughs> yeah, so that's me playing in the the BB King box. So I'm sliding up from the five. Play to the play it one more seven. time the whole phrase. Sorry sorry I didn't hear that. Can you play it one more time? So I'm in A. I'm in the BB King position. So third position pentatonic. But I'm sliding up from from the five from E. To G to the to the flat seven. Something like that. Yeah, I do it uh, a lot of times. You'll hear me do it double. I slide both times though. I slide both times. So. So you play three notes on the B string. Yep. Yep. Oh, got it. And then I'll end it. And then I'll end it a lot of times with this. And a lot of times I'll end it with this. Right. Yeah. So what's the what's the fingering on the top string? You have three one. That's all three. Ah, oh, you know where I went wrong? I didn't slide back. It's that's all that's... three. Yeah. All third finger. Now I got it. You know, I, I went down here instead of. Now I got it. Yep. Yeah. 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 It takes so I need to listen to it a couple more times till it becomes natural. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. That's 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 one of my go-tos right there. I, I think <laughs> I saw you. I think I I saw you play that. It was in a, in a Tim Pierce video. Where, where Tim put that at the beginning uh, <laughs> on some cruise ship. And Maybe. I think it was that lick, and I, I, I thought that was so cool. It's one of my favorites, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> Very nice, It's George. like my version of a BB King lick, pretty much. It's a BB lick, but BB would mostly bend it. Yeah. And let's not, not forget that you're using 13s on that guitar, so... I am. In I standard am. tuning. In standard tuning. For those... On my beautiful Ibanez signature guitar. <laughs> Ibanez signature bros for life. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Man, Josh, that was... I think I speak for anybody watching. That was absolutely incredible. Thanks so much for Thanks, sharing your, your talent and your knowledge with us so graciously. Happy to, man. I, I had a to. blast. I feel inspired and I'm going to spend the rest of the night... If I didn't have to edit this video... <laughs> I would spend the night transcribing those licks. Dude, it's late where you are, man. I'd be asleep. Oh no, no. I, I got I got a got a little while to go. 
All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. I thank you so much. And you got it, man. Yeah. T tell me where. Tell the, the folks who are watching where they can find you. Oh well, best is my website, joshsmithguitar.com, or my YouTube, youtube.com/slash joshsmithguitar. Uh, you know, and of course, I have instructional material out with True Fire and Jam Tracks. Uh, but if you want to hear me play, buy a record. Listen to actual music. Buy a record, It's not guys. just about guitar. <laughs> Don't just go on Spotify. Actually, buy them. <laughs> buy a record. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks so much, Josh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you do the backyard work now. And, and so <laughs> such. Ruling, man. All right, man. See you soon, dude. Dude. <laughs> and that is it for today, guys and girls. Thank you so much for checking out this lesson. Let me know in the comments whether you liked it or not, what other kinds of topics you'd want me to cover, or what other kinds of formats you'd like to see on this channel. Also, check out Patreon, GoFundMe, and of course, Skillshare, our generous sponsor. They brought this video to you. Thanks so much, guys. Don't forget to do all the youtube -y things such as liking and subscribing and sharing on your social media and all that good stuff. And until the next video, I say bye-bye and take care.